What's going on guys, Andrew Pillock Hockey here back again with another video and you guys see the title, we're back with some more Toronto Maple Leaf trade rumors. Now there will be trade rumors for the rest of the league coming within the next few days. It's just there's been so many unanswered questions when it comes to the Leafs and what could be going down at the NHL trade deadline. But if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe because there will be a ton of stuff coming for all teams and of course a lot to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs because this is one of the most interesting times of the year, especially if you love trades coming up on the 24th of course. And uh, let's get right into it. So we have to start off with the fact that the Toronto Maple Leafs have had a ton of injuries this year. It's it's no secret. And of course, another big one has come at probably the worst possible time for the Leafs as they're fighting for a playoff spot right now. Andreas Janssen will be out to at, to at least mid first round if the Leafs make the playoffs. And hopefully soon enough, I can say when the Leafs make the playoffs. But there's a lot of questions on whether or not Andreas Janssen would have been a trade piece for the Leafs. I have to answer that question by saying yes. I think Andreas Janssen was the most reasonable guy that could have been taken off of the Leafs top six or top nine, wherever you see him fit. I see him more as a third liner, but it looked like he had the potential to be moved in a package, you know, with a, a piece or a, another prospect. I, I don't know, but he he was going to be traded. I think him or Kapanen had the biggest possibility of doing that. Well, now it's a great thing that the Leafs have depth. They have a lot of forwards that can slide into those spots and play pretty well. I mean, the addition of Clifford helps. He's not a guy that's going to go out there and score, but his physicality helps make space for other players. You have Pierre Engvall, who's taken a step this year. He can play in the center or wing position. But Andreas Janssen being out hurts the Leafs in more ways than one. Of course, him not being on the ice is a bad thing, but him also not being able to be traded is another. Now, there is some sort of light that you can see in this, and uh, it's the fact that the Toronto Maple Leafs have said that they're hoping that Morgan Riley will be coming back before the season ends, which means that they can't put him on long-term injured reserve. So for the people that are wondering what's long-term injured reserve, well, basically it's what the Leafs have Nathan Horton and David Clarkson on right now. Those guys' careers are over. It's not on the Leafs' cap, but the Leafs are still paying those players. And the Leafs are able to, to work around the cap. They're just maximizing their space, basically. You don't have to worry about that. But what you do have to worry about is the fact that when a player does go on LTIR, so let's say Andreas Janssen. So Janssen's cap hit is no longer on the Leafs' cap uh, until next season, of course, or whenever he's healed. So let's say Janssen was better within a month. If they put him on LTIR, well, it doesn't really make a ton of sense because when he comes back, that cap space just comes back on there. But now that he won't be ready until the playoffs, if they make it, well, the Leafs don't have to, like, there is no cap space. Like, there's no, like, cap ceiling in, in the playoffs. The Leafs could add another another player that has a similar amount of money as Andreas Janssen, and then Janssen comes back in the playoffs, and it doesn't matter. They're allowed to do that. But right now... The Leafs don't have Janssen on LTIR, like technically, or I'm not sure if they've really moved him on there, but um, the other name that I wanted to bring up was Cody Ceci. They're still waiting on an update on him. So let's say the Leafs put also put Cody Ceci on LTIR. The Leafs would have like $7 million basically to work with, maybe a bit less. But all I'm trying to confirm here is, is that at least, at the very least, the Leafs will have just over $3 million to work with at the trade deadline. The problem with that is, is the fact that now you can't trade a Janssen, a Kapanen, or a Kerfoot because one of them's injured, and the other two need to stay because of depth. The Leafs don't want to keep trading off more forwards. This is where things could get interesting. I do believe that the Leafs have dangled the possibility of trading one of their UFA defensemen. Uh, Cody Ceci being injured, it doesn't look like he'll be one of those guys. I think that the Leafs are going to convince this guy uh, if the doctors are telling him that, you know, it's not really a great decision for him to come back uh, before the playoffs. I think the Leafs are going to try to see if or convince him, I guess, to take his money and wait until the playoffs. And by then, he might not even be playing another game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But we'll have to see how that works out. But I, I do believe that there's a possibility that Tyson Berry could be traded for a defenseman that's better suited for the Leafs' blue line, and that's a guy who's more of a defensive style of defenseman. I think a lot of people are not valuing Tyson Berry high enough. I'm not huge on him right now because he's making a lot of defensive mistakes, 
but there are teams that would be better suited to have him in their lineup because the Leafs have an abundance of guys that can pr provide offensively on the de on the defensive side of things. They don't have anything except for, you know, Hall's been pretty good, Muzzin's been good, um, and I will be talking about him because it looks like he's going to get a contract extension before the deadline, but I'll make a another video on that as we're probably going to get updates tonight on Saturday's headlines. We might even get more trade rumors tonight on Saturday's headlines, depending on when you're watching this. But Tyson Berry seems like an obvious choice for the Leafs to go, okay, well, this guy, Tyson Berry, is at least worth, a se worth at least a second or a first. Like, people are forgetting Berry's putting up a ton of points under Sheldon Keefe, and he just, he can go to another team and be an offensive threat for somebody. There's been defensemen traded in the past at trade deadlines that have similar numbers to Tyson Berry that are acquiring first-round picks. Like Shattenkirk got uh, a first-round pick traded for him. So Tyson Berry can be put together in a package with a prospect like, I don't know, maybe Bracco, but he's on personal leave, so I don't think they can move him. So you can uh, maybe attach him with something else on the team or straight up Tyson Berry for a, a defensive-style defenseman so you bring in a guy that's better suited to play on this Leafs blue line and your problems are kind of solved. Now, I want to shout out my buddy downtown Stephen Brown because he made an obvious point too. The Leafs need better goaltending to get into the playoffs. Now, Campbell's been good in his few starts, but Freddie Anderson hasn't been able to, you know, really find himself. I know he's been injured here, but even before that, he's playing like an, you know, a not a first goaltender. He's playing as a backup. He, he's not essentially playing as with starter numbers. So I don't know what the Leafs are going to be doing in terms of anything else regarding their blue line. All I know is, is that if they get better goaltending, like my buddy downtown Stephen Brown said, but I'm pretty sure what a lot of people would agree and it's common sense, is that you need better goaltending. And let's hope that he can find his way. Uh, there's just a ton of things that the Leafs can do at this point, and I think that moving Barry to soften uh, a, a cost of another style defenseman makes a lot of sense rather than you know trading off another forward and then your depth starts to get even worse. Um, Mikheyev could be back before the season ends, so that could help. Like the Leafs are going to have deadline acquisitions that are already on their team, and the and the thing is is like. It is going to work in the Leafs' favor. I know people don't like the terms like own rentals or, you know, players coming back as being deadline acquisitions. But when your best defense, offensive defenseman in Morgan Riley is out right now, that is a deadline acquisi acquisition. When you have a guy like Mikheyev come back who could, you know, play in their th on their third line and make everybody better around him because he has done that. He's a really good hockey player. Uh, he doesn't have the best shot, but he's a little physical. He's a big guy. He can score every once in a while. That's a deadline acquisition to me as well. So hopefully after the deadline, if those two come back, that's a big boost for the Leafs. It makes their depth better. It makes their blue line better. But I do believe trading a guy like Tyson Berry for assets makes a ton of sense, especially if you're getting a defenseman back coming the other way. Because I have liked the play of Timothy Liljegren and Rasmus Sandin, but you don't want those two to be the only guys that you upgrade on your blue line. Although, again, I will say I have liked the play of both of those guys. I think that they've been good ads for the Leafs. But if I'm a Leaf fan, and if you're watching this and you're a Leaf fan, I would keep an eye on what they're going to say about Tyson Berry because uh, there is a chance to me that he does get dealt. His value has increased under Sheldon Keefe. And again, guys who can put up big numbers, right-handed shot, those guys go for a lot when it comes to the trade deadline. And especially if teams feel like they can hold on to him and sign him to a long-term deal, there's going to be teams that will line up to trade for him. I don't want to hear that the Leafs um, are not checking in on anybody. There's a lot of people who watch these videos and a lot of people on Twitter and everything that seem to say that Kyle Dubas isn't doing anything to, to help the Leafs. He just acquired toughness. He just acquired a very good backup. You guys need to calm down a little bit. He has tried to address needs. You have to remember there's also there also needs to be a GM that picks up the phone. Kyle Dubas doesn't just to get pay, doesn't get to just pick up a magical phone and call an NHL GM and make a trade in 10 seconds. It takes weeks, sometimes months, and they don't have that luxury right now. And there's also GMs that just don't want to trade for certain people. I'd also like I'd also like to address everybody who wants Matt Dumba on their team. I'm a fan of Dumba. He's physical. 
but he's injury prone and he's offensive minded. He's not good in his own zone. He's exactly like Tyson Berry. If you want the Leafs to trade for another Tyson Berry, be my guest. But he is not what you guys think he is. And uh, maybe I'll make another video like that too. But he's not better suited for the Leafs blue line. He would actually probably uh, fit in well offensively. But again, he's not good in his own zone. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Let's get to 7,000 subscribers. More rumor videos are coming. Like a lot. Like what is it? It's the 15th. There's still a bunch of time left, and I'm going to be posting every single day trade rumors. So make sure to subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.